Hi everyone, welcome to this week's lesson. This week we are going to be covering the 1990s. This is Mrs. Headings, if you don't recognize my voice. There are a lot of things from the 1990s. It was a very significant decade. However, unfortunately, we won't be able to talk about everything. So let's get started. President at the beginning of the 90s was George Herbert Walker Bush. He was the 41st president and he served from 1989 until 1983. He was a single term president only serving four years. Some funny things about President Bush is that he made an announcement that he hated broccoli and made a bunch of broccoli farmers furious. He also became an overnight star when Saturday Night Live actor Dana Carvey played his character. If you haven't seen Dana Carvey play President Bush, you totally have to YouTube it. President Bush also passed the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990, and what that did was prohibit discrimination in the workplace. It also required accommodations for employees who had disabilities and also made public areas more accessible for Americans with disabilities. He also passed the Clean Air Act of 1990, and that was to help control air pollution through regulation. And this is something that is obviously still being debated today. One of the most identifying events of Bush's presidency had to do with the Persian Gulf War. What happened during the Gulf War was when the Iraqi president, Saddam Hussein, invaded the Kuwait. I'm sorry, invaded Kuwait, not the Kuwait. Kuwait. And if you notice, Kuwait is the tiny little green country on the map. So he invaded the country and because it was such an oil rich country, it made it an international problem. The United States and other Western nations were asked to help intervene. And in mid-January of 1991, the air offensive known as Operation Desert Storm started. President Bush declared a ceasefire on February 28th, about five weeks later. And by that time, most of the Iraqi forces in Kuwait had either surrendered or fled. Although the Persian Gulf was considered a success, there was simmering conflict in the region, um, and that eventually led to the second Gulf War, known as the Iraq War, in 2003. Some of the effects of the Persian Gulf War is that it led the United States into a major recession. Businesses started to downsize. President Bush had to go back on his pledge when he raised taxes. The presence of American troops in the Middle East angered many Muslims, like this person that you see on the screen. This is the start of more occurrences with Osama bin Laden. This also led to President Bush losing his re-election to William Jefferson Clinton he was the 42nd president of the United States, and he served from 1993 until 2001. Some interesting facts about him is that he was in a band. He played the saxophone, and he's also featured in the show The Family Guy, playing his saxophone. His name was originally Blythe, but he changed his name to his stepfather's name, Clinton, in high school. He is known for stimulating the economy by cutting defense spending and welfare and taxing higher income citizens, thereby creating a budget surplus of $63 billion. The first attack on the World Trade Center was in 1993. An explosion created a hole of 20 feet by 100 feet, several stories deep. It caused the path Station ceiling to collapse. PATH is the Port Authority station, and what that means is it's the subway and the train station of New York City. I was there quite a few years ago, and underneath the World Trade Center, it was like a mini mall. You could go in there, you could go to the food court, you could go to different stores, bookstores, anything you wanted. There's a subway system there. It was pretty, it was pretty cool when it was there. 
um, it's an es it's estimated that uh, 50,000 people were evacuated. Yusuf, uh, Ramzi Yusuf, he is the the man in the top left corner of all of the the bombers. He was the mastermind of the bombing, and he was sentenced for 250 years in prison. And interestingly enough, he's in the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado. He said he did it to avenge the sufferings of the Palestinian people because the United States aided Israel and Palestine and Israel have been fighting for years and years. So he wanted to get back at the United States for that. The next event has to do with a religious group led by a man named David Koresh. They were called the Branch Davidians from Waco, Texas. And this is a really fascinating story because this man believed that he was the Messiah of God and his teachings and beliefs brought many people to be completely loyal to him and they believed him, whatever, whatever he said. Well, the FBI and the ATF got involved because they had information that David Koresh had illegal guns and ammunition at his compound and he was also accused of polygamy and had many wives underage. For 51 days, negotiations between David Koresh and the FBI continued on, and it finally ended in a fire when 75 people died, including children. It's still unclear who started the fire. Uh, the FBI pumped gas into the compound, um, and many people who survived the fire said that the the Branch Davidians did not want to commit suicide. So this incident brought into question the role of government. How much should government be involved in people's lives, the freedom of religion, and also the right to bear arms? Next, we have President Clinton's Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. He believed that he was taking steps that were helping the gay community. He said that homosexuals had the right to serve in the military. However, don't talk about it. And many thought that this was a solution. However, most were upset that the policy still discriminated against homosexuals. And in 2011, and in 2011 President Obama repealed this policy. Next, we have the Brady Bill. The Brady Bill basically says that if you want to buy a gun, you have to wait five days in order to undergo a background check. This gun control law was named after James Brady. He was the former press secretary to President Ronald Reagan. And Brady was accidentally shot at the assassination attempt on former President Ronald Reagan. He was no longer to perform his duties and he was confined to a wheelchair. For many, many years, he campaigned for this bill to pass despite fierce opposition from obviously the National Rifle Association. All right, up next we have NAFTA. NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement that was signed by President Clinton. It basically means that taxes and tariffs will be removed during trade between the United States, Mexico, and Canada. All right, in 1991, Rodney King was pulled over after a high-speed chase through Los Angeles. And after he refused to comply with the police, King was beaten. There was a person in, off in the background who saw what was, what was going on, and he was able to video record what was happening. There were four officers that brutally beat him. These officers were put on trial in 1992, but they were acquitted. And so the result of that is, is the L.A. riots. Um, many people responded to this acquittal by destroying parts of Los Angeles. And Rodney King made the famous plea. I don't know if you've heard this before, but he said, people, 
I just want to say, can't we all get along? Can't we all get along? And the U.S. Department of Justice filed federal civil rights charges against the four police officers, and two of them were found guilty. The other two were not found guilty. King was eventually rewarded $3.8 million for the injuries sustained. All right, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this occurred on April 19th, 1995, and this was the first domestic terrorist attack of this size. Uh, Timothy McVeigh, the person seen here in orange, and he was a Persian Gulf War veteran. He had joined an anti-government militia after he came back from the Gulf War. And he and another man named Terry Nichols hid a bomb in a rental truck. And when the bomb went off, it destroyed the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. This killed 168 people, including 19 children. He chose the date of April 19th to mark the anniversary of the Waco siege and also the anniversary of Lexington. Lexington, when the Patriots fought against the British in 1775. Um, like I said, this is one of the deadliest domestic terrorist events that occurred in the United States. Um, and Tim Timothy McVeigh was sentenced to death. Okay, in December 19th, 1998, President Clinton became the second president to be impeached. Up until this time, only one other president was impeached, and that was President Andrew Johnson. And he was impeached in February of 1868. We have more information about Clinton's impeachment, um, and that's going to be one of your assignments to do today. But basically, Clinton was impeached, and as we know, impeached means charged, not necessarily removed from office. It is a stepping stone for a trial to see if uh, bad things have happened. So he was charged with perjury or lying under oath because of his relationship that he had with this woman here, Monica Lewinsky. The Columbine shooting on April 20th, 1999 at a Columbine high school in Littleton, Colorado occurred when two teens went on a shoot, shooting spree, killing 13 people and wounding more than 20 others. Then they turned the guns on themselves and committed suicide. Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris were the two students who started this national debate. It is still an incredible, controversial topic today. It resulted in disagreements over gun control laws and the interpretation of the Second Amendment. Today, we are still trying to keep our schools safe. Now for something a little bit more fun. All of the things that you see here are 1990s technology. Can you recognize what any of these things are? Or do you have any of these things in your house? That little Nokia phone at the top, I had a red one. Floppy disk, Game Boys, Walkman, Palm Pilot. I didn't have a Palm Pilot. But these were new technologies of the 90s. That TV right there, we had one of those. It would probably weigh as much as my car. It's ridiculous. All right, pop culture of the 1990s. These are some of the most popular sitcoms and cartoons and movies of the decade. Now, I had to add this slide because... Looking at fashion today is so similar to fashion in the 1990s. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Um, crop tops, distressed denim, chokers, overalls, halter tops, Doc Martens, baggy t-shirts, backpacks. Those are all super popular in the 90s and we can see them as a comeback right now. 
Okay, now, famous music and musicians from the 90s. I'm going to give you a couple seconds to look and see how many you can recognize, and then we're going to quiz you. Okay, ready? I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Okay, that's long enough. Okay, top left-hand corner, we've got the Backstreet Boys. Then we have Green Day. Then we have MC Hammer, of course, Pearl Jam, Tupac, Britney Spears, all the way over to the left again, TLC, U2, Belle Bip DeVoe, obviously, Oasis, obviously, Radiohead. Back over to the left-hand side, we have the Spice Girls. Move up a little bit, that's Depeche Mode. Down a little bit, Metallica, up. Garth Brooks, down, Smashing Pumpkins, up. Wu-Tang Clan, over to John Bon Jovi. Up to Nirvana, down, Clint Black, up, Mariah Carey, and my favorite, Weezer. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope you learned something, and I hope you're all doing well.